Greetings, brethren, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was a Gentile, not a people. I was raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord by my father, my first and father, and in the assembly where I was growing up as a child, there was much emphasis put on <coughs> physical healing, on speaking in tongues, and sin. Sin was defined also as those who played cards, drank, smoked, went to the movies, wore makeup, running around with another man's wife or the husband. But I was not a sinner in my eyes because I did not do those things. And my earthly father wouldn't allow it. As time went along, I was about 12, I was urged to come forward uh, during the altar call for forgiveness. For, uh, to be forgiven, to be saved, that was their turn. Well, I should have questioned that, but I didn't. I just knew I wasn't the, going to be charged with those things that I had mentioned. By the following spring, I was 13, and we went to a, a creek and was baptized. It wasn't very long after that until I found that I was capable of doing many of these things, or all of them, and I took pleasure in them. I wasted more years uh, going to other assemblies and was taught to many more unprofitable things. Uh, their views on being saved and the laws to live by didn't benefit me. Twenty-some years ago, I was invited to attend the services at 78th and Independence in Maryville, Indiana, where many of us here are gathered today. And there I heard, for the very first time, the word of the Lord declared, not a doctrine, not some man's words on how to, but the word of the Lord was declared. I was invited to come back, that this is a body of people in quest of heaven, to learn with them and to grow with them. I had uh, not considered the words of the Lord before, but because I did hear the <coughs> it caused me to consider myself before the Lord. God has much to say concerning man, and I needed this word. That word was for me. And for the first time, I learned what sin really was. It's unbelief. Not believing the record that God gave of his son. I did believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I, I knew that from a child. But what I didn't believe was that I was a sinner in needing this Son of God that I was rejecting. I had not repented, having a change of mind. I had not confessed my sins before the Lord of glory. I did not understand that my baptism was to, in order for the saving of my soul. And these things were sound words that my faith could be anchored in, and it produced the hope that I have today. Amen. This law that I have tried to keep, a law I have rather devised in my own, had been kept by our Savior, Jesus Christ, the law that he kept perfectly. That law that he kept showed me how ungodlike I was. But I was not left without the remedy because the brethren who stood there to minister 
consistently declared these things openly and plainly and with great delight. And the more I heard and considered, the more I could see it made sense that I needed to take hold of this. He, the, our Lord, had sacrificed himself for my sins and he said they were put away. I had to believe that. It was a little difficult because Satan would have it otherwise that I would remember this. But as time went along and uh, this became more clear to me, it was easier to believe what God said, though I still struggle with these things, and what Satan said. These brethren did not hold seminars on how to overcome. They consistently declared Christ Jesus, the one who had overcome. So this being the case, my hope became stronger. My faith was faith as to strength to strength and glory to glory. Those things became more precious to me, more desirable. I was accepted in the beloved. Now that was a delightful sound. In spite of all my failings, I was accepted in the blood. God had given me a space in which to repent, to avenge my disobedience, to make straight paths for my feet. <coughs> and I thank God for that. I am now better able to recognize and to assess by God's word the warfare that is daily mine. And I know the reason for the trials and tribulations. And I'm able to bear up under severe grief or pain or sorrow. It is for the same joy of the hope that was set before our Lord that I can now hope for that which is eternal. He endured that. We will too, by faith and this hope that is within us that it cannot be shaken if it is nourished by the word. We've been bidden to come up hither to the right hand of God, for Christ is in throne, the very throne room of God. And there, my vision is clear, my hearing has improved. And I said, uh, my feet are no longer in slippery places. They're on a straight and a narrow way. No more do I have to go haltingly along. Concerning this hope of glory, on the day of our Lord, when I stand before him, I can have on the wedding garments. <coughs> I will not be asked to leave because I have not been bidden to come or not properly close. I will not have to be ashamed or naked before him. This Lord of glory, I'm thankful for you. With the Lord God sanctified in my heart, I am now ready to give an answer to every man that asks me the reason for the hope that is in me. And my desire for me and for all who have hope is that we would continue to desire the mind of Christ in us, that he might be formed in us, that we would be before the world what he was when he walked here. And though we be despised and rejected, though none go with us, we go on alone. This insight and understanding I have of God and His kingdom now, in this walk, will but be enhanced in eternity. All that I gather to myself here of the kingdom and allow it to grow in me will be much more mine there. Amen. And someone had said in the assembly years ago, hope, and someone just said this, and it is uh, a companion of faith. Without it, we would have no basis, no desire, no reason to endure. 
no understanding of why God gave his son, why he purposed things the way he did, why Christ Jesus himself had to do what he did to accomplish that which would bring us again to the Lord. But for me to appropriate, it seems like a small thing compared to what our Savior kept.